the Latina Leadership Podcast, the podcast made for Latinas by Latinas. Get comfortable, amiga, and enjoy the conversation. Hola, and welcome to another episode of the Latina Leadership Podcast. I am your host, co-host, Angelica Casares. Next to me, I have another co-host for this new season, for this new year, 2024. Uh, we had to say, of course, as I said this before, goodbye to a couple of other co-hosts from last year. They were moving on to bigger and better things, to be quite honest. Um, so on this episode, I have Suzy Barrera. From San Antonio, Texas, um, you guys have already met Olga. This is my other co-host. And of course, we still have a co-host from last, um, yes, last year, Carolina. So introductions. Susie, tell us who you are, what you do, and what you're excited to bring to the Latina Leadership Podcast. Thank you. Thank you, Anelka. I really appreciate y'all having me here and being a new and upcoming co-host for the Latina Leadership Podcast. As she mentioned, my name is Susie Barrera. I'm from San Antonio, Texas. I am a mother, wife, and student currently here at San Antonio College. And I'm just really super excited to be a part of this movement that uh -huh. Angelica has founded in bringing representation to the Latina community. Okay. So what do you feel like you're going to bring to the Latina Leadership Podcast? So I feel like some of the things that I could contribute to the Latina Leadership Podcast would be my authenticity, uh -huh. my passion for representation, and just a down-to-earth feel of what a Latina from San Antonio brings to the <laughs> table, right? Um, I was born and raised in San Antonio, Texas. Mm -hmm. Now I live in a small town 30 minutes south, heading towards Laredo in Divine, Texas. Okay. And I really feel like it's given me a new perspective outside of, you know, city living to a slower pace um, and country living. But I am still San Antonio through and through. <laughs> and that's also why I come to college. I wanted to really raise the status quo of education within my family mm -hmm. and be an example to my children. Mm -hmm. So starting college up again at 38 was big. Um, I'm going to be 40 this year, and this is my graduating semester. So I'm super excited about how far <laughs> I've come in that journey. Yeah. So for those who cool. listen, we education is a big part of the Latin Leadership Podcast. It's one of our pillars, right? Mm -hmm. Um leading back to like where so usually a lot of people from San Antonio are like generational from San Antonio. Mm -hmm. Is it the same for you? It is. It uh -huh. is my mom and my grandparents. And I'm not quite sure before my grandparents because uh -huh. there's some disconnect and a erasure, right? Okay. That I feel like has happened oh, in okay. my lineage. Mm -hmm. And um, I've just really tried to explore that. But I think, you know, going to Ancestry, a lot of people do their mm -hmm. research that way. Um I think my grandparents' parents came from Mexico, and that's okay. then it starts to get confusing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you lose sight of like where exactly they but come I've from. But I've been here. My grandpa um, built a house off of San Joaquin in Castroville, and uh, <laughs> I lived in that house for a little while too, growing up. Uh -huh. um, and you know, my mom took us to Fiesta every year, and mm -hmm. so we have all those uh, San Antonio traditions that really keep us feeling. Uh, connected to the community. Mm -hmm. You feel very much connected to your culture. Mm -hmm. Is that because of where you're at, where you live? Now that you're older, you visit other places. Is it is it because of that or is it because of like the integration that your family like instilled in you? Like you're a proud Mexicano or you're a proud San Antonio or you're a proud Texan. What What is it like that for you or what keeps you rooted into your culture? You know, I think my enthusiasm for my culture comes from a different place, actually. Okay. So when I was younger, representation wasn't such a big thing in media. Uh -huh. And I had to kind of search for that connection to my identity. I, my grandma only spoke Spanish, and so we would watch novellas all the time. But growing up within the school system, I kind of felt like that wasn't so important uh -huh. anymore growing up. But the closer I got to having children, it was something that really stirred up in me. Uh -huh. What is my culture, my heritage? Where do I come from? I really okay. felt like it was something that... You know, was it it was a mystery to me for a little bit. It's hard to admit that, too, because I I get so happy when I hear people talk about how far back they can trace their lineage. 
much. Right? Mm-hmm. It, it it really adds some grounding factors to your identity. Mm-hmm. But that wasn't my experience. So where that came from was really having to do my due diligence and making sure that what I'm going to educate my children about their culture and their heritage, I'm well informed in. And mm-hmm. so San Antonio just has such a vibrant um, community. Mm-hmm. They really express the cultura here. They do. You know what I mean? <laughs> We are they overextended. Let's be quite honest. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, uh, they no, do, they, they, do. it's a, it's an, it's an, it's they immerse you into it. They really, there's do. no choice. Once mm-hmm. you land in San Antonio, once you drive into San Antonio, that's it. Yeah, that's you know it. Where you're at. It, yes, yes, you have no choice but to be here mm-hmm. <laughs> and divulge exactly what it is that they're serving you on the culture aspect. So, what is it that you pa- that you're passionate about? Now, the podcast is passionate about many topics across. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It we hit on a lot of pain points, and a lot of that was deep diving due to a lot of research that we yeah. did, and we made sure that we were trying to cover issues, uh, trying to cover um, topics that we would be interested in. So, you, I, I'm curious to know what you're interested in. I want to know what you're enthusiastic about? So that's a really good question. I appreciate you shining light on that. I am very passionate about bringing awareness to mental health issues because I believe that it's not just about mental illness, but it's also about mental wellness. Mm -hmm. And if we have the tools and the skill sets, the coping mechanisms to be able to, you know, really cultivate a mental wellness, we might be able to eliminate some of the stigma that comes along with mental illness. Mm -hmm. My mom um, suffered from mental illness since I was a young child. And I think that I came into a realm of not really knowing what I was experiencing and what she was going through because I was young, Mm -hmm. you know. But after a certain age, um, I came into the knowing Mm-hmm. of mental illnesses and mental health awareness. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that really opened the door for me to be able to accept certain things that happened in my upbringing. Mm-hmm. And I was able to reconcile with my mom about her providing the best that she could given the circumstances and some of the issues that she was dealing with. So I would like to heighten more awareness Mm -hmm. on, you know, just our mental wellness, just what that encompasses, Mm -hmm. you know. Do you recognize that had she gotten help, circumstances might have been different or your relationship with her might be um, not lost, right, in, in the past a little bit, connected with her maybe a little bit more? I do feel like had there been a different infrastructure okay. surrounding mental wellness mm-hmm. that my mom might have been able to seek support and help sooner than okay. um, to the stage that it got to because she, she really suffered from it. And that really um, added to a lot of chaos and dysfunction. Absolutely. You know, and mm-hmm. I don't want people to go through that. You know, mm-hmm. I feel like now we're after COVID, there was a heightened awareness on mental wellness because we've seen what uh what what staying away from people actually can do to even the normal brain right (laughs) even the normal let's be honest what's normal um can actually do to the to those who don't are not susceptible to like mental health issues Mm -hmm. we could see what it it can do with the separation and with the chaos and what uh, a world pandemic war anything Mm -hmm. that like instills or like disrupts your life your day-to-day can actually have impact on you right and so i think people are who deal with mental health issues without all of that Mm -hmm. happening um are hidden and we hide and sometimes in plain sight for a lot of people and so it's it was difficult to understand before the pandemic but during the pandemic, people were very much aware of it, which is why it was a huge topic. Yes, yes. Yeah. I think a lot of people do very well masking their symptoms. Oh, yeah. You know, I think that in society, we're still stigmatized for talking about some issues, you know, even aside from mental health mm-hmm. and these conversations need to be brought to the surface. They need to be had, mm-hmm. and people need to feel comfortable being uncomfortable about some of these topics. Mm-hmm. They really do. Oh, there it is. So you're bringing uncomfortability to topics and conversations. It has to happen. <laughs> I'm sure what I've said already, you know, in some spaces yeah. might make somebody feel triggered or uncomfortable, yeah. you know, because I think that it is relatable. Mm-hmm. 
It might not be very um, apparent. It might not be talked about a lot, but I'm pretty sure that a lot of people suffer from some sort of exposure, if not themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, stress is already oh. a big factor. Stress management, to... yes. Mm -hmm. Stress definitely does uh, desarrolla. I don't know how to say that word in English. <laughs> yes. It's uh, Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, it unravels. There you yes, go. Yes. It unravels. Stress unravels a lot of things in your life, physically and mentally. And, like, yeah, so it can dictate your future a lot of the time it really can take you out your character <laughs> yeah it does <laughs> you know without having um stress management uh coping skills mm -hmm. even the like four square breathing right like mm -hmm. those things really go into i want to say they're kind of like uh it's kind of like a cheat code right to your oh, okay to okay yeah to reset your mind oh, okay and get out of uh -huh. the uh, flabbergasted type of i have the picture in my mind yes. it's called a play like mm -hmm. it's a play that they do like they tell you like what is going to happen but yes mm -hmm. yes i see what you're saying i hear what you're saying um tools we, we used to call it in therapy there were tools that were given to us to be able to use when um when a circumstance arose yeah. when stress <laughs> started to like come what was the best way or what was the more effective way for yourself to be able to um, not overcome, but deal with it? You know, I had to take up counseling for a little bit. Okay. When I started school, I was hit with a whole nother facet of having to be on top of my studies, right? Mm -hmm. Or any projects that I wanted to get involved in. It already was another added measure to my home life with my four kids and my husband. <laughs> so I was like, you know what? I want to seek outside help for how I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was a stress level that I hadn't reached before. And so when I started those counseling sessions, I noticed that my counselor was very much trying to make me aware of before I got to the explosive <laughs> uh, reactions. You uh -huh. know, he was like, well, where are you feeling it? What was it? And I was able to tune into kind of like triggers within my body. Mm -hmm. One of the ones that he got me to focus on was uh, I'll do a deep Sigh. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. You know, and that's kind of my first, like, okay, you're getting there. You're, it's starting to show. Uh -huh. And so then he gave me some stress uh, coping skills. Which uh -huh. The breathing, I feel like, really helps. For me. you, helps. Mm -hmm. Okay. So he he said, you know, breathe in for four seconds, hold it for four seconds, breathe out for four seconds, and hold it for four <laughs> seconds. And different breathing exercises actually have different effects on your brain. But that one really helped to settle mm -hmm. and ground me so that I could continue on mm -hmm. and not be so reactive. Okay. To things. So yeah, that one I would have to say, try it. See if it works for you. <laughs> it's helped me to uh -huh. continue because, you know, all these life stressors, they're going to come at you. Yeah. Regardless. Yeah. You could be doing everything It's inevitable. Perfect. Yes. Mm -hmm. But, you know, whether it's traffic, a delay, <laughs> I mean, anything, your, your kid getting all excited and you get overstimulated, we really as women need to be in tune with those things so that we're not so quick to react. You know, okay, and and be able to manage our emotions more because those are just energy in motion, right? Emotions are just energy in motion, and if we want to harness that and and take it and use it for what we want, we really have to get the skill set under our belt to be able to do that. But we can, we can do anything that we set our mind to. Please keep going down that topic because I like that. <laughs> I yes. like that. I like somebody else who's very much enthusiastic about mental health. Mm -hmm. I talk. I can. I can, I think I'm. I think people are tired of me talking about no. mental health because they're like, oh, my God, here she goes again. Get off your soapbox. And I'm like, oh, OK. But the fact that you're speaking and doing something about it now, because you know mm -hmm. that what has tr transpired in yourself and your mom and mm -hmm. all of that is going to affect your children. Yes. Do you teach your children about mental health or do I you do. guide them in ways? Okay, I do. I try to facilitate a safe space for my children to be able to seek that help, right? So mm -hmm. I have an 18-year-old um, daughter who has been diagnosed with PTSD and anxiety. And I feel like that manifested itself in a different way initially, mm -hmm. um, but we finally got her to, uh, you know, a therapist and a psychologist who could really 
pinpoint what it was that she's dealing with. And she might be on the spectrum, too. We're really not sure. But I allow my daughter to kind of, I want to say, initiate those questions within herself. Hey, mom, she does. she's really intelligent. So she does some of this research on her own when it mm-hmm. comes to, like, being on the spectrum or some of the behaviors that people might exhibit you know, if they are on the spectrum or if they're going through PTSD. And I really feel like it was vital for me because of the experience with my mom to take mental health seriously. Yeah. To advocate, Mm -hmm. to make sure that if I'm stressed out or if I'm catching myself acting out of character, I need to be aware of that. I think somebody told me once, like, the acknowledgement sometimes is enough. Mm -hmm. because people can stay within a space to where they won't even acknowledge that they're experiencing these things. Or, you know, I know in Mexican culture in the past, a lot of that stuff would just be swept under the rug. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't be dealt with. Mm -hmm. It would chisquia, yeah, Yeah. chisquia, yeah. Yeah. You know, things like that, which are very not appropriate because it still stigmatizes the person who's going in it and it it completely invalidates their experience right and so i feel like us as a community we need to be aware of what one another's going through Mm -hmm. we need to be able to even spot it out and and say like i don't Mm -hmm. know if you know this but i i noticed that you were struggling there is there something i can help you with and be willing to step out and and be that person maybe they won't say that time you don't feel comfortable or a lot of people will be like what are you talking about what do you mean no no they try to Mm -hmm. mask it but it might be something that you planted a seed about Mm -hmm. and then later on that person will come back to you and say you know what i really appreciate you asking me how i was doing being recognized and acknowledged that I'm struggling helps mm-hmm. within because then it makes me aware and alert of like what I'm actually going through. We I I live in that state sometimes for so long that I forget that I'm living in that mental health. Like I, it's peaking and I don't even I can't tell it's peaked so much that I can't tell you where the down like portion is, mm-hmm. and so I live with it in day day out. But when other people can notice it without it getting without them being too um oh you're okay and i'm like yeah, yeah or oh you're okay you're like oh and i'm like oh my god i don't know if i need you to feel sorry for me i'm not no, a, like a, a i'm not a I, i'm not a puppy like mm-hmm. i'm still like a human being like i think that it's really you know? hard though angelica it's it is really hard. hard it's to hard acknowledge it and sit in it right because there are times where my husband will catch me and he's like hey like you're being a little harsh you know <laughs> and immediately my reaction is to be reactive no i'm not no, I'm not. <laughs> but it's already showing. Yeah. Right? It's already yeah. showing. And so there are times where I have to take that feedback mm-hmm. and maybe not address it right there and then, but I got to come back and I got to revisit it mm-hmm. and say, hey, thank you for checking up on me. I'm sorry that I wasn't ready mm-hmm. <laughs> for you to address me. Or even with my children, I can get snappy, right? Uh-huh. When midterms are up, I have projects and deadlines that I got to meet. Sometimes mommy isn't the sweetest mommy she could be. Yeah, I know. Mm-hmm. And I have to meet my children mm-hmm. and say, hey, you might have noticed that I've been really like snappy. I haven't been easy making room for you to be no. you. And I have to apologize. I have to acknowledge what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. I have to humble myself and I have to a- apologize to my children for being stressed out Susie, mm-hmm. overwhelmed Susie, manic Susie, <laughs> trying to do everything <laughs> super Susie, uh-huh. you know, but it's not really about that. If I'm trying to expose my children to a higher level of productivity, a mm-hmm. higher level of education, they're going to have to see me in the vulnerability of that, right? Mm-hmm. And I want them to succeed. I want them to know when they go to school or they have a career exactly what they're jumping into. But I also want them to see that they can still take control of that. Mm-hmm. If we mess up 
we can still take control of that. We can say, I'm sorry. How can I fix it? We could still be there for each other. I don't ever want them to feel like, oh, I messed up and that's set in stone. No, it's not. <laughs> I'm all about a redeeming factor when it comes to people because we're all going to mess up. It's yeah. just not practical to think that mm -hmm. you're going to get it like that. It's not. So sometimes we're much more forgiving for to others than we are to ourselves. I agree. How would you work on that? How would you? Because I love what you're saying. So mm -hmm. I think you've done your work. Mm -hmm. I want people to hear this. How do you work on forgiving yourself? Wow. So that's that's a deep question. Mm -hmm. um, it's much harder, like you said, to forgive myself. A lot of guilt inwardly comes out mm -hmm. just from preemptive gender roles. <laughs> It's a very nice way of saying a it. a mom, a student, you know, a lot of heaviness I feel like is attached to that because you have your idealisms, mm -hmm. right? You want to be the best of the best. And how can you strive to be the best of the best mm -hmm. if, you know, you're not already? A lot of that is Wayne. Um, I try to allow myself some grace uh, in the moments where I see my children happy mm -hmm. and fulfilled. And I think that that allows me space to be like, everything's okay. It is working out. <laughs> <laughs> You've kept everybody alive up to this point, you know. Um, and journaling mm -hmm. and talking. I feel like confiding in somebody who feels just as heavy as I do about some of the things that we carry really helps to lighten mm -hmm. uh, the burden. Mm -hmm. You know, they're called platicas. Like, yeah. I know yeah. in Curandesmo, they also have, you know, a cleansing rite like yeah. that as well, where yeah. you just sit down with your, you know, counter person mm -hmm. and y'all talk. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people have, have experienced it with their best friend. Yeah. Right. Like, oh, yeah. man, I just feel so much better after uh -huh. talking. And that that is essential to the community. That's something that I I'm sure has been around for generations. Mm -hmm. Just that com like confiding in one another, trusting mm -hmm. in one another, letting your guard down and being vulnerable with that person and knowing that you're not going to get any judgment. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You just have another counterpart. Just being willing to be as vulnerable mm -hmm. and as sharing as you are. And I feel like that helps me to just lighten the heaviness that comes with a lot. Sharing. I like that. I like having the deep conversations. Mm -hmm. But I found that sometimes you do have to be not careful, but you do have to have a sense of like, because some people aren't ready to have those deep conversations, That's you know? Truth. Yeah. So you just have to be careful, like, when you communicate with them and when it's when they're ready. And sometimes I test people mm -hmm. and I'm not like, ha, ah, you don't know anything. Mm -hmm. No, it's just like, how much of me am I willing to divulge where I walk away thinking, okay, well, that was good. Like, mm -hmm. okay, good. You know, mm -hmm. as opposed to like, did I overshare? Did I burden them? Said, and then a wow. lot of people, a lot of people, you know, end up talking about like, we overburdened them or you, uh, what do they call it? Emotional dump on people. I'm like, that's not what I was trying to do. That's, I don't think that's what anybody ever tries to mm -hmm. do. Mm -hmm. They're just trying to figure out like, maybe they don't know yet. They don't yeah. know who to like, um, confiar in. They don't know who to dialogar with. They don't know who to exist in their own space and skin to be like, oh, this is who I'm talking to. And this is what I'm going to say because I trust her. Right. And then but then people walk away. I don't want people walking away feeling so heavy when I walk away. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with that? How do you deal with like knowing when it's time to speak to somebody or when it's time to. It can be so intimidating mm -hmm. to let your guard down and be vulnerable with people. Right. You Sometimes we do leave those conversations questioning like. Did I say too much? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was this yeah, not? Or was that heavy? Were they even going there? <laughs> Did I completely <laughs> misinterpret what that person said? Yeah. Um, you know, coming to school here, I get to meet uh, people from different backgrounds, different ages, and I talk a lot. <laughs> I'm, I'm okay to admit that. And I will find myself having conversations with my peers. I call them my peers. Um, and sometimes I will feel like I'm learning something from them. Mm -hmm. So maybe I think that the telltale sign for me would be, are we both getting something out of this conversation? Okay. You know, uh -huh. or am I just the like they just keep saying that's crazy and that's crazy. <laughs> I'm not taking the hint. <laughs> 
Yeah, they're, they're like, huh, oh, mm. I, okay, I gotta go, Susie. <laughs> but a lot of the times I notice that I am imparting wisdom, and mm-hmm. that is my main driver to keep those conversations or keep myself open to having conversations, mm-hmm. right? Because I feel like, I've been blessed with some wisdom to maybe help somebody not have to learn something the hard way. And man, am I always trying to curb those people? <laughs> oh, I just want to save you. <laughs> some people got to learn the hard way, though. But that's been the lesson that I've learned. But if I see them nodding their head, if I see them listening intently, I uh-huh. feel like they're taking something away. And I think when the conversation dries up and it's just me talking, I'm like, okay, girl, <laughs> it's time to shut it down. <laughs> it, that's it. It's time. Mm-hmm. Okay. So what I, 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 you have your kids with you and I definitely yes. want you to get back yes, with your I kids do. because they are, yes, they're on spring break. And the last thing they want to do is wait for mom to record. <laughs> so. Before we set off to the last question that I usually ask, is there anything that you would like to ask me that maybe you're curious about that I can answer for you? Yes, I do have a question for you. Um, First, I want to say that I really admire what you're doing with the Latina Leadership Podcast. I wish that it had been around previously when I was younger because I was always trying to seek for a role Mm -hmm. model or anything to pull from so that I could know how to be, Yeah, which might sound crazy to some, but that was my journey, right? I really just want to ask you, what inspired you to bring (laughs) it forth, you know, this Uh baby that... I feel like it resonates with a lot of Latinas. Yeah. So I did. I I actually only asked me the same question. Nice. But I answered it in a way that would be understood. It is because of my sister, Erica. It is because she did pass away without listening, just like you didn't see it. Excuse me. Didn't see the opportunity or didn't have much of uh, role models Mm -hmm. to... I don't even know if it's a role model like thing, but just a conversation where she can like, um, what do you call it? Where she can guidance. Yeah. Or or relate. There you go. Any relation. Like Mm -hmm. if the fact that we're both Mexicans and that's relatable. Perfect. That's it. So that's if that's all I give you. That's okay. Mm -hmm. That's okay. That's fine. But I think in in addition to like that and the, the guiding force behind it was Erica the fact that I get to meet people like you, and that's what continues me doing these things. I get to have amazing conversations with amazing women. Okay. I get to like, I get to experience this firsthand. And I tell everybody, this is not necessarily like Angelica founder platform. When I it, when and if I walk away, this needs to continue without me. Yeah. Um, I and it has to be a place where I'm not. When I disappear, it disappears with me. That's not. It's never the goal. Mm-hmm. The goal is always to to um, it to continue with amazing Latinas on the platform, and That's they awesome. continue doing the things, and that they find little Ericas and little Angelicas and little Susies along the way, and they bring them into the fold, and they say, "This is who they, these are. This is my community. These are my Latinas. I identify there." So. Before we move on and mm-hmm. before we, I let you go, get back to your kids, go do fun <laughs> things for spring break. I ask every Latina on the podcast the same question okay. as we always end. Do you consider yourself a leader? Why and why not? <laughs> so I do consider myself as a leader and I do because I feel like I'm pioneering a path for myself and those that come after me to be able to represent. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that in and of itself, since I didn't have that, is big. It's monumental. And we need more of that within the community. Oh, nice. Okay. Is there something I did not ask you that you would like to continue sharing or that you would like to share? I don't think so. <laughs> we went through a lot. We went through a lot. We did. We did. We did. We, we, covered, mm-hmm. we covered a topic that is very near and dear to me. Mine I'm excited well. about this. I'm excited to continue to come into San Antonio and maybe you and your girls or you and your four kids and husband can come down to Houston and we can record and we can do all those amazing things and Olga can come and Carolina's there and yeah, we continue because awesome. I want them I want people to see what the community can look like even when we come from different facets even if our, our lives intertwine for just a little bit mm-hmm. that we can do amazing things and we can have amazing relationships even if they're just for a moment 
I would like to have long lasting really, but that's my thing, right? Yeah. I find out something, I'm like, you're not, I'm never going to let you go. <laughs> I've had to learn that they're growing. You have to let them go. Yes. They have to do their own oh thing. Gosh, yes. And if life allows it and we're lucky, we get to come back around and see each other one more time. Pero in the meantime, I would like for us four to continue that development that I feel like the last five of us were able to do mm -hmm. uh, for even a sink of time. We knew we'd learn from each other for sure. Pero with that being said, Susie, thank you for being on the podcast. Thank you for accepting being a co-host here on the podcast. I think you're going to have amazing conversations. I think you obviously, you know what you're talking about. So, you <laughs> know, you no, no, it. no. Yes. Thank That's you for amazing. having me. Yeah. I really appreciate being a part of the team and everything that y'all are striving to do and, you know, for the community and, and just for any, I want to say any demographic, uh -huh. right? Just, Absolutely. Just because we're geared towards Latinas doesn't yeah. mean that anybody else can't uh, jump in and mm -hmm. see what we're doing uh -huh. and maybe emulate that yeah. for their own community. Yeah. But Latinas come in such a broad, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I want to say appearance or yeah. even culture behind uh -huh. it that... Yeah, we have our work cut out. Yeah, we do. <laughs> <laughs> we definitely do. And I do. I, I thank you for saying that, actually, because it does because we're Latinas doesn't mean you can't relate or you can't see what it um you can't relate or you don't know how to like. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. We're just we just so happen to be Latinas. Mm -hmm. First and foremost, we're women. Yeah. Women who are underrepresented, who see who struggles and who want to do more and better for the community as a whole. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. On oh, my really God. Thank you, Susie. It. What did you think of the conversation? If you enjoyed what you heard, let us know in the comments. And please don't forget to